Welcome to Trading Lounge and the S&P 500 for the 25th of May, starting on the daily chart here. It appears we're going to be looking at the uh, 3000 uh, area here and then see a correction across this major trading level here at 3000 for uh, wave two. There's also a possibility that, um, especially with the NASDAQ, that um, that this whole trend can just keep building and continuing through uh, into new highs. So we need to be a little bit mindful of that. And we'll talk about that with the NASDAQ today. But let's just focus, let's just be conservative here and focus in um, on a wave count that can take us up, up into the 3000 and then terminate there and uh, pull back for wave two. So with that in mind, we'll go to the four hour chart here and we're looking at it like this here. So looking at an A and a B and a C here for wave four, then wave one and two here, and then going up for wave three here and wave four here. Now, there is a case that wave three can sit over here as well, um, and it's probably best suited to there, but on the intraday chart where we'd been tracking and I'd picked up this wave four as an alternative count, we had five waves up into this little space here, but we'll look at that. But um, yeah, there's another reason for this too, and we'll look at we'll look at that in a moment. Um, but as it goes so far, we're looking for wave five up into this space here, up into three thousand or just above three thousand. Now, if we make a new low here, well, then we can turn bearish at that point. So as long as you know that on the hourly chart just drilling in a little bit further we've got wave three here and wave three here now the reason for that is that um, I can count five waves up into this space here and in this case I can't I can't count five waves down here in this in this instance it's a little bit tricky it counts more like a corrective wave here in both cases these lows here have pulled back roughly to the 38.2 percent retracement level here but it's possible we've got an a wave here a b wave here and a c wave here and when we look at this here perhaps on a 15 minute chart this little leg here you can start to see that it's difficult to count five waves down from down from this point here because we can go one, two, three, four, five into here, some sort of correction here for wave two. Maybe this is wave three here, that would probably make sense with an A and a B and a C for wave four here, and then down for wave five. But it's all scrunched up in here, isn't it? You know, in terms of having a wave three, it's moved quickly enough here. So when I look at the cash market for this, which we'll do now, this is the uh, NASDAQ on a five minute chart at the top. So from the top to the NASDAQ, we've got one, two, three, four, five correction. And then this move down through here. But I wanted to have a look at the S&P 500. So this is a five minute chart for the S&P 500 on the physical market, the cash market, the SPX. So uh, down for one here, back for two, one, two, three, four, five here, nice third wave, then the fourth wave here and then the fifth wave coming down through here. So in this case, we can count a nice five wave structure down here. The cash market is still quite low here. So we, you know, there's two levels of resistance here. There's this space, this block here, and then there's this block here. And normally you can find uh, the closest largest number in into these spaces here to work out. Um, and normally the, normally the 50% um, distance between these two here you start to see all the open and closes in here so you start to see well that we're already clipped a ticket here so we'll be pushing past that one here at the moment uh, we should push higher for that um, but yeah anyway just rambling on but main point takeaway here is that there is five waves down here so it's possible to look at this all this down as an A wave here a B wave back up here a bit hard to count with the gap in uh, here for this so um, little ABC here for the A wave, up for the B wave, high here, and then down for the C wave. But it does take us higher here, you know, across the top here. So one of the other things that um, we need to, you know, look at too, which I've mentioned on the NASDAQ, is that, you know, we can be uh, just climbing, continue to climb higher. But I want to be conservative, and I just want to go step by step. So our job in the next session really is just to count five waves up here, and then if 
that should terminate and if it goes anywhere above those five waves if we look at one and two and three and four and five here and then we get some sort of sell-off here if it goes above those here well then we're going to be looking at a trend that's that um, will just continue higher and there's a bit of evidence for that um, in terms of the Nasdaq so we'll have a look at the the Nasdaq one of the things with the Nasdaq which I don't particularly like that I've done is I've counted say wave four here then one and two and three and four and five here and we're probably going higher here <clears throat> when I look at alphabet well I can see that we're going higher now looking at these as overlapping wave structures you know it's not really a good look uh, here for this so um, and even we had overlapping wave structures in this space here with wave four pulling back over wave one here so it's possible that this is an A and a B and a C wave to this point and then we go up for one and back for two and then up for one and back for two here and then up for three, four and five, actually just continuing higher with all of this. <clears throat> so we just need to be a little bit mindful and for, for that, um, as I just mentioned with the S&P 500, if we're going to make a little another move up into this space here for this, then... Um, we need after that terminates here after a little impulse wave here then we need to look to see if we need to go higher I mean as traders we don't want to be we don't want to marry any particular side we don't want to be fixed you know we don't want our intellect fixed on being bearish or bullish we're just looking for signals you know we're just fishing that's all we're doing so it's not about being right or wrong of course it's nice to be right with the analysis but it's tricky to get that right all the time but it's the setup that um that we we don't have to miss you know and we'll only miss them if we get fixed on one side of the of the market now as i've mentioned before we are in a bullish trend and um, we need to stay with the friendly trend, so to speak. So um, let's do that. We'll just be conservative. Our job really in the next session is to count the five waves up here. And what that will do, that when that tops out here, that will give us another signal to go along at that point. And so we'll take that. It'll be just another high, but we'll be able to get a better position than that. It's like taking this high out here. Well, that's way up there. So we can come down to this high. We can come down to this high in here. We can add on this high here. It's just buying new highs. It's just a little bit of a safer way to go. You don't always get the full range of things. Um, but if you're unsure about things and just taking signals, and you know, half the time the trades that you don't expect to turn out are the ones that make you the money. So that's why you just need to, you know, uh, take the next trade. It's just a a, a, a rinse, a wash, and repeat. You know, so um, yeah, we can dive in and have a little look at this as well here. So just on the hourly chart here. What I had here last time we spoke, we counted one and two and three and four and five here. So um, we've got this bit of a spike here. Um, this, you know, I mean, do I take it from this point here? I can count, I counted five waves up here before, right up to this point here on the tick chart. Um, so um, this, you know, if I, if I count this the same as the, the US markets would be down for one, back for two, three, four, and five here. That would put this wave four here, of course, over here but I'm forcing I'm forcing the wave count at that point you know that's that's what I'm doing so um, we'll just see so to make to, to, to sort all this out we'll just be looking for those five waves coming up uh, into this space here and this 500 is such a nice number to work with the number five is the second strongest number so we're going to see the arrival the reaction first high above the level we're going to see some type of corrective move here and then that will give us a setup to trade long at that point so we're above the 61.8 percent here so far we're at the um 400 so we could what what we're doing here we could also do here as well so let's just uh move in a little closer here to look at this here so 15 minute chart i might just go to the tick chart just see right so so in this case here, we've got the arrival, the reaction, the first high above the level, which is always in five waves, and then we've got the corrective wave here. So, you know, if I was there at the time, I could go long here, I could go long here, I could go long here, 
you know, should be adding. You should need to build into the trend, you know, two or three times in the beginning, or you can use group group one, which group one, if we're at the 400, then that would be uh, 10, 20, and 30. Now, you know that if you get if you get support on top of the 30, we'll expect another one of these patterns here. but in a smaller version just on in this space here so if you get that set up the classic trading level set up at that point then that will take you up to the next level which will be the 50 at that particular point point. and the good news about this is that this gray band here that's the 50 and the 61.8 percent so you can see that we're actually getting support on that now so that's telling us that the trend is going higher at this particular point in time i've just got the stop here under the first five waves here but um you could lift that you could lift that higher um but i'll leave that to you let me just check five abc here so the safe one is here you could bring it to this point under this low here for the time being you could put it under this one but just in case it, if it finds support on the three on the this is where this is where the trading levels comes in really handy because if you get support on top of the three there then you can bring the stop up under this level here and then when you get stop when you get the support on top of the 50 here the same classic trading levels pattern on top of the 50 then you can move the stop up under the 30 here and don't put stops on whole numbers so you put it at 26 or 22 there and then once that's got support here then you can bring it up there because a stop really is just to say that well um you know something's not panning out right so you know i need to 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 exit um at that point and always stay within your risk all right i won't waffle on anymore i'll leave it at that uh thanks for tuning in and thanks for the support really appreciate it cheers